in my opinion, culture becomes almost dominant, fundamental. Because we were talking, uh, Joe and I, before about the sort of the uh, Silicon Valley genome, if, as it were. And he said that, you know, most of if you could actually trace the origins, the genesis, the, the who begat who of Silicon Valley, you'll trace it back to, you know, either Berkeley or Stanford or H.P. Fairchild, you know, uh, and, 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 and whatnot. Now, Period. the question, though, becomes, well, why, for example, does Japan or Germany, who equally have had for a long time truly great companies, okay, and on the other hand, truly great academic institutions, okay, certainly, you know, very, very significant academic, why, why don't they have startups? Why, and, and, and my answer, you know, to answer my own question, but I want to sort of turn it back to Marie, because you're working with Europe right. to a certain degree, is that it's all about culture, okay? And there has to be a culture of entrepreneurship which goes way beyond universities or a couple of great companies. Without that cultural drive, you can't explain why there's no, you know, startup explosion in, 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 in Germany or Japan, because the technology there is world class. And the universities are. Go ahead. Well, it may have to do just with momentum in certain areas because I think that you do have the cultural issues. I know that with Amsterdam, with our office, for example, as we first went into that, I, I, every time I would go into the office, I would hear exactly the same things out of my team there that I heard here in the Silicon Valley. The same dreams, the same visions, the same concerns, except theirs was always preference with we're different because we're Dutch. And so there's this perception that I can't go do this. I can't be American because I'm Dutch. I can't have that mentality. So that may have to do with it. But I think it may just be that there were a large number of people that were brought together. I myself look that I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. And even though you've got great institutions all around the United States, how many of us moved to Silicon Valley from different places around the United States because you had a critical mass that was here that you built upon that. I ask that question. How many people here were born here in Silicon Valley? One, two, three, four, dozen. Yeah, where's, where's Tony? How many of you came here in the last five years? Yeah, Come no. on. Not that. that, by the way, is going to be, the, I think, the most critical determinant the for the future year. of the Valley is can the Valley continue to attract mm -hmm. the best but, and the brightest but, from around the world? Which I, which I think, by the way, is in real question. Because I think that if you look, for example, in China and India, the, the kind of entrepreneurs who are setting up companies where people are going back. People mm -hmm. who have been in the States have either gotten and U.S. Successful education. Too. And very successful and successfully yeah. went back not, with money. Also. But now they're going back, and, they, and they're choosing their, their countries, quote, unquote, yeah. in terms of lifestyle or other issues. But with that, I want to turn it open to the other two mics. One mic over there, one mic over here. Please feel free to hit us with any kind of questions you'd like. And I need a, a watch because this is broken. One, uh, one quick comment, though, on culture. You're talking about Europe. I mean, one of my companies was acquired by Siemens, so I got the feel for Germany. Now, Germany has an incredibly high uh, payroll taxes, so there's not much money available for somebody to start a company in Germany, so they stay with a big company. It's pretty difficult to start out and not pay all the you know, taxes. You taxes. glossed over my culture question, and I'm not going to let you get away with it because okay. you attributed <laughs> it to four companies, and it wasn't the companies, it was the people. And you dealt with the Japan question, and let me finish this, and then we'll take a question. Think about the Depression when this valley was founded. Now, quick data. Depression started in 29, lasted 25 years. That means that's when the Dow came back to where it was in 29, to 25 years. So we're 10 years into the Depression. Packard and Hewlett graduate from this school. Packard goes back east to get a job in General Electric. Terman calls him up, and by the way, if you want to put depression in terms, if we thought the NASDAQ was bad, if it equaled the depression in terms of down, it would have had to go to 430, not 1,200. So Terman calls him up and said, yeah, we're in a 10-year depression, unemployment is 15%, but I think you ought to quit your job at GE and come out here and start a company, which nobody's ever done before, by the way. And he did it. And when I was dealing with Japan and the Minister of Technology asked me what they needed to do in Japan about culture, I said, let me tell you one of the reasons I will know when you are successful. I'll come over here and I'll read in the paper, Ide-san quits Sony, takes two engineers, moves to Yokohama, does new internet appliance. 
He looks at me, he looks at me, and he said, not possible. <laughs> About two weeks later, Tony and I were at the World Economic Forum, and I had lunch with E-Day. And without telling him the setup, I told him the story. And he looked at me, and he said, not possible. <laughs> That's me.